Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm gonna do a comparison on stocks versus real estate. The comparison between what's better, buying and owning your house as an investment or renting and using the down payment you could have used on the home for investing in stocks. I'm gonna run a bunch of scenarios for you so you can see what's the best option to build your wealth the quickest. Is it through buying a home or renting and investing the rest in stocks? You're gonna to wanna to subscribe if you're looking to build your wealth through stock market investing, options trading, and day trading. Again, my whole goal here is to share all the trades I make and help you build your wealth so you can achieve financial freedom. Hit that thumbs up button if you appreciate it and let's dive into the computer. We're looking at a $600,000 home, down payment of 120,000, assuming 20% down. The mortgage is gonna be $2,366. Taxes each month will be roughly 400 a month. Insurance around 50 a month. Utilities around 130 a month. Totaling $2,946 each month out of pocket. About 1,024 of that goes towards principal. We are going to assume 5% appreciation each year on the homes. Now, this is a little bit more conservative based on the huge run we've had in real estate. So I'm showing a conservative scenario now. I'll show another scenario later. These are the home values each year from 600,000 up to 977,000 with 5% appreciation each year. This is the formula here and the formula adds the 1024 in principal each month over the course of one full year combined with the down payment we have and 5% appreciation on the home value. That's how we get 162,000. Then it goes to 206,000. And by the end of the 10 years, we're at 620,000. And this is tax free because we're living in this home. Again, we're comparing us buying and living in a home to what if we rent it instead and then use the down payment as equity into stocks. So with stock equity, we're using that down payment, 120,000. We're assuming 15% returns per year, which is pretty significant, while contributing 1,000 a month. The reason why we have 1,000 a month is because there's 1,000 in principal and the total per month out of pocket for the house was 2,900. If you subtract the principal from the 2,900, we are wasting 1,900 with the payments to the house. So we're gonna mimic that in the stock example here. So 1,900 a month is wasted on rent. So we have a thousand a month left over to go ahead and put into the stocks each month. After 10 years, we get a total of 745,000. But remember, this is taxed. And typically, well, in Canada especially, you're taxed on half of the total amount of gains. And that will go straight to your personal income tax bracket. If we assume that we had 120,000 and it became 700,000, well, we could assume that we have about 600,000 in gains that need to be taxed. But remember, only half that is taxed. So about 300,000 of the 600,000 be taxed. And that would be taxed at roughly 40%. So we could assume about $150,000 in taxes. If we assume the $150,000 in taxes, then that brings us down to about $600,000. After the taxes, this is $600,000 and this is $620,000 of equity, which means that in this example alone, buying and holding the home to live in would actually give better returns, assuming 5% appreciation each year than investing in the stock market, getting 15% rate of return each year. And this is more risk-free because you don't have to think about anything with the stocks. You know, you have to, have to choose, you have to pick and choose things. You know, the market could be bad. You can go to bear market and you know, you'd have more trouble sleeping at night compared to the real estate where you know, like, hey, I'm just gonna make these mortgage payments and then in 10 years, I'm gonna have a good chunk of equity. That's scenario number one. So te technically speaking, scenario number one, buying and holding the home wins. Scenario number two is assuming 20% returns each year. Everything else is the same. 5% appreciation in the home. That's how we get to 620,000 by the end of the 10 years. By the end of the 10 years with the stocks, we get to 1,082,000 and then the tax on that be roughly 200K. So we're left with about 880,000 in equity over the 10 years. 880 compared to 620, you can argue definitely doing better there with the stocks. So 20% returns each year for 10 years is much more challenging and rare when it comes to buy and hold investing. I'll show you examples that beat that though, so that way you don't get too discouraged. Now I got a lot of kickback on this. I posted about this on Instagram. A lot of people saying houses appreciate much faster than 5% a year. And you're right. If you look at the last 10 years, major cities seem to appreciate more than 5% a year. So if you look at Toronto, end of 2011, a uh, three bedroom, three bath home was $520,000 on average in Toronto. 10 years later, at the end of 2021, it's about 1.1 million. So what I did is I went for the city investment calculator, I put 520,000 in after 10 years, 8% return each year, brings us to 1.1 million. So this means that in Toronto, the market appreciated on average 8% a year, every single year for the last 10 years, even though we had this good spike from COVID. 
over the whole 10 year period, it averaged 8% returns each year. And I pulled up the same chart for Miami, Florida. Miami, Florida looks exactly the same, averaging an 8% appreciation on the home value every single year for the last 10 years from 2011 to 2021. Assuming 8% per year on the home value, everything else is the same, 20% returns a year on the stock, we see the total be 938,000 tax-free after 10 years, and that beats out the 880,000 because you have to pay 200K in taxes at the end of the 10 years. On average, if you bought that $600,000 home in 10 years, it's worth about 1.3 million. Over a double in the home value, where your equity goes from that 120,000 all the way up to 938,000, again, tax-free because you live in the home. Now you might be stumped, now you're thinking, wow, real estate, buying a hole just seems like a way better strategy. And honestly, it is in most cases for most people because to get 20% annual returns each year, there's a lot of research that would have to go into that to try to actually achieve that. A lot more stress than just buy and hold in a house. If you just choose a good location for buying your home, then you let the appreciation do all the work. Here are some examples of how we can actually beat that. If you take a look at my top triple leverage ETFs, you'll see it's SPXL, which is the S&P 500 triple leverage, TQQQ, which is the NASDAQ, TECL, which is a technology one, and then UDAO is the Dow Jones. And in the last 10 years, you can search up any of these tickers. I can show you the charts, but I just summarized it right here for you. 39% a year average for the SPXL. And you might be thinking that's a safe, diversified bet. It just moved three times more volatile than the S&P 500. If you use that as an example, 39% a year on your investment is gonna turn into 4.1 million after 10 years. You're gonna pay 1 million in taxes, so this total will be over 3 million tax-free compared to the 938,000. And this looks like a no-brainer, but we just had a savage bull market, right? So. You know, basically the last 20 years has been a bull market, but the last 10 years has also been pretty smooth sailing. I would argue most people would have panic sold. If you were in SPXL, you have to have one hell of a stomach or you'd have to never look at this investment because let me show you what happened during COVID. If you see SPXL over the last 10 years, it looks like a steady climb, except for this massive sell-off here. This is COVID. This is code right here. Imagine what this would do to your psyche. Let's bring it on the five-year chart. You're sitting at the top. You watch yourself go through a 74% crash. If you get up to 1 million, you watch yourself lose $740,000 in the span of one month. And I, I know, because I've been there, I, I held through this COVID crash with Tesla stock and I watched it go down 65%. So I know exactly how you would feel, but I strongly believe 95% Maybe 99% of people, if they saw this, they would instantly be so depressed. They would want to sell to preserve anything they have left as it was going down. But if they held, then from the peak in COVID to now, you would have went up another 66%. The point is, if you can get more than 20% returns on your money each year, then buying and living in your home is not the quickest way to build wealth. There's a bunch of caveats. I can go through so many other scenarios. A one other scenario could be that if you bought a duplex instead and you rented out the other unit, this would bring even better returns than if you just bought the home and lived in it. So there's a lot of different ways of going about it, but I just wanted to show you a couple examples so you can see if buying and living in your home is best for you, depending on your risk tolerance, depending on if you like investing in trading stocks, depending on if you like real estate more. I just want to show a bunch of scenarios so you can decide what's the best path for you to build your wealth the quickest and the most stress-free. If you're unable to stick to your strategy because it's too stressful, then it's not going to be sustainable long-term and you're not going to stick to it long-term and then you're not going to have the wealth that you desire. So we want to find that balance between what's the strategy you can consistently stick to to build your wealth over the long run. That's going to conclude the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.